and got multicolored kente, which is called Yokuma. Yokuma because the two women were from the Oyoko clan, so it was named after that. All right. Then after that, one Oseko for introduced designs into into the kente weaving. So there are designs which have a lot of meaning and philosophy behind it. For example, they have a particular design called... Uh, uh, we have the arrival of the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adodankwa Ekufado. Nana Adodankwa Ekufado became President of the Republic on the 7th of January in the year 2017. And uh, this will be the fourth time as President he is presiding over the Independence Day Parade uh, on the 6th of March in the year 2020. And so the President has arrived. What are the, the next issues we expect to see, Commander? So once he gets down, the parade commander will call the parade to attention and pay compliments. You remember I said earlier on that that is a mark of paying respect to a dignitary. So they will pay the appropriate compliments. And definitely the national anthem will also be played. It is after that that he will, be, uh, he will inspect the parade mm -hmm. to have a closer view as to the personnel on parade, look at their turnouts, and then move to the perpetual flame stand where he will light the flame. So right after this, we should have the national anthem and then the inspection will follow. Nana Adodanko Kufado, President of the Republic of Ghana, has just arrived at the Babayara Sports Stadium in Kumasi. Uh, where he will be, indeed he is the commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces and once uh, the protocols are observed, uh, he will proceed to inspect the parade as we wait for the president to arrive and to uh, get off uh, from uh, his vehicle. Um, what's the inspection of the guard of honor or the parade all about what how significant is it what does it symbolize well it's very very significant in the military whenever you have a parade it must be inspected because before you go on parade you turn you turn out very well you make sure your uniform is ironed properly your shoes are shining and so inspections are a part of military parade uh, I've not seen any parade that has not got an inspection as part of it. And so being the national one, definitely uh, Mr. President will have to go through, see, inspect the contingent on parade. He, he, he will not get down to check their uniform, but definitely it will give him a closer look as to what they are wearing and their turnout. And because everybody on parade will know that the president will come and inspect, we will all make sure we are in our best clothes, in our best uniforms, with our shoes and everything sparkling. All right, so the president making his arrival uh, to the stadium. We were uh, earlier talking about uh, this uh, arrival and that uh, even from a distance, you were able to tell us, oh, no, uh, that is not the president coming all the way from that because you were looking out for certain uh, signals. And then we see the signal here. He is in the company of uh, military personnel riding horses. These are police officers. Okay. This is the police mounted squadron and the police mounted squadron was formed in 1940 to with seven horses and their core mandate is to provide ceremonial escorts to then governors and now to our president the horses were also used for escorting the president sorry the horses being used today are we have 21 horses in all and it is under the command of deputy superintendent of police Mary Clara Agamba. She is riding the horse named Step by Step. DSP Agamba is the first female police officer to head this unit and also to mount the horse for presidential ceremonies since the formation of the mounted squadron by the Ghana police. And uh, an overhead shot of the entire stadium, the 40 thousand uh, capacity stadium at uh, the Babayara uh, stadium and um, 
uh, uh, beautiful scenes here as the president arrives. And so all these horses are trained in Ghana. Yes, they are all trained in Ghana. And in fact, if you need a place to train, just come to Bema Camp, Three Mounted Squadron. Everybody is allowed to come there to learn how to ride. And riding is a very good form of exercise. So I will encourage the general public to come to Bema Camp, Three Mounted Squadron for horse riding, and, if they are interested. And uh, earlier also, uh, you told us um, uh, the, the parades uh, for the military but here significantly playing a huge role as by the, the, police. the police. Exactly. You know, the president has just come, is now coming onto the stadium to be part of the parade. And we know that internal security is the responsibility of the police. And so once the president is coming, it's the, the duty of the police to provide that security for him. It is when the police are overwhelmed that the military comes in. So uh, 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 at some point in time, uh, uh, are the police going to then hand over the president's security here to the, the military because this is a military environment, so to speak? Not at all. Here we have a joint security force in place. The police are here, the military is here, and other security is, uh, organizations are also here. So it's a joint effort to pro protect the first gentleman of the land and other high-profile personality here. The and President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Adudanko Kufado, stepping out of his vehicle, and there he is, adorned in white uh, shirt. Last year in Tamale, he wore a white shirt with a beautiful design of the Ghana flag embossed on the left side of his chest. Uh, when our cameras pick uh, him, we will be able to uh, see for ourselves what uh, and so very similar to what he had done last year. Uh, predominant are colors of Ghana and then a design of uh, the Kente as well. And you were telling us about the Kente colors uh, and how beautiful and significant uh, the messages these uh, colors mean. I was the telling you a particular symbol mm. within the Kente, yes. which is often used at the edge of, of, of the kinti cloth mm. and this is called apremo and this apremo uh, all right so we have the national salutes right now
Reid! Stand out! Is! Islamic way, uh, again another symbol of the unity in diversity among Ghanaians, uh, when Muslims, uh, Christians or traditionalists meet, it doesn't really matter, any of them can say the prayers at any point in time. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Mumin is, uh, yes. So like you were saying, we'll first have the traditional prayer, mm. and then we'll move to the Muslim prayer, and then the Christian prayer. Right. And that is very, very important and good for Ghana as a nation. In some countries, people are so intolerant that they cannot accept each other's faith. Mm. But we are lucky as a people. And so we need to use some of these petty, petty things to build our unity as a people. Mm. I, I, I have seen families in which you find uh, three siblings, one being a traditionalist, the other being a Muslim, and the third being a Christian, and it, it doesn't really matter. Excellency, the 
President of the Republic, the Vice President, His Excellency Alaik, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, Members of Parliament, the Judiciary and Ananam, so that they may be just a piece at home. And that through obedience, your law will be shown for your praise among the nations of the earth. In time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness. And in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in you to pay. Our Heavenly Father, today marks the 63rd anniversary of Ghana's independence. And so we have met here to celebrate this national event. We pray that the Holy Spirit will preside at these activities of the day so that we achieve grand success. At the end of it all, we will have every cause to raise our holy name. All these we ask through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Good morning, Mr. President. The 63rd Independence Anniversary Parade formed up by the Ghana Armed Forces, other security services, and the Ghana Education Service. 67 officers, 660 men and women drawn from the Ghana Army, the Ghana Navy, the Ghana Air Force, the Ghana Police Service, Ghana Prisons Service, Ghana National Fire Service, Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Ghana Immigration Service, and the Ghana National Ambulance Service. 442 teachers, students, and peoples drawn from the schools within the metropolis with a mass band by the Ghana Armed Forces and the Ghana Police Service ready for inspection. Group Captain Nana Edujemfi reporting, Mr. President. few years the president together with the CDS and the inspector general of parade uh, police I beg your pardon will now inspect the parade of Lieutenant General Obed Buama Aqua the CDS and the inspector general of police Mr. James Opon Buenu are his ceremonial aid de camp that is like personal assistant to him because they are in charge of both internal security mm. and external defense so, so do you remember ever taking part in uh, one of these uh, occasions and i'm just recalling uh, having to stand there and wait for the president to drive past you it was a feeling that um uh, it cannot be described i don't know if you have had a similar experience I, I never had the experience of actually being there or mm. being part of it because somehow i never made the cut <laughs> uh, during the, the rehearsals mm. so i couldn't make it there but it was always exciting to watch from home and to sit behind the television and hear uh, my father take us through the history mm. every time it had to happen. Mm. Very exciting for children. Uh, 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 teacher Kantanka, I'm sure you have seen it quite, a, quite a few of these yeah, occasions. I remember the occasion very well. During the days of Nkroma, students were lined up 
uh, on the roadside and I was always uh, very happy to be amongst them. So uh, holding our flags mm. and waving when the president passes. You actually had the honor of seeing the Osajifu yes. himself. And what did it feel like standing there and seeing the man uh, Osajifu, you know, uh, inspect a parade that you were uh, very much a part of? Yes, because uh, you have been uh, brought up to believe that he's the first gentleman of the land. And to see the first gentleman of the land, you, you become uh, a bit very, very happy in your life. You write uh, a story about yourself, um, one page in your life. <laughs> that you have seen the person. That's right. And uh, uh, Commander, you uh, was telling us about uh, the inspection of the parade. The president, of course, is doing that in the company of his ceremonial aide the camp, camps, the IGP, and, and, IGP and, and the, the CDS. CDS. Yes. Okay. And then we also have the Forces Sergeant Major. He's in the second vehicle. And he's the person of Chief Warrant Officer Baka Ramos. He's a senior, most senior other rank in the Ghana Armed Forces. He's the most senior of all. Mm. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, and, and, and so now we see the president actually inspecting the, the parade. Yes. Uh, what, what is he looking at? It's purely ceremonial. It's purely ceremonial. And like you all shared, I'm sure if you're on parade and you saw the the president drive past so close, you'd be excited. True. So it's purely ceremonial. But in the unit, it's for other reasons. It's meant to check your turnout from head to toe. And also parade in general are meant to test your endurance because it's physically tasking to be standing for hours and stuff. Uh, so, but this inspection is purely ceremonial. And have you had the privilege oh, of yes. being inspected by a president? Oh, before? yes, I have. I have. I think this was in 2001. I was a contingent commander. And it was, in fact, the excitement is beyond description. And then I went Ghana. Uh, and commander, this is what I've been waiting for. I mean, okay, so the president has driven past the security uh, agencies. Now you see him driving past in front of some very young uh, school children and students. And this is what I was asking Silicon and Teacher Kantanka about the feeling that uh, many of these students will take home uh, simply cannot be described by words. Uh, for many of them, this is it. And they have been rehearsing for weeks just for this particular occasion. And I'm sure this may be the closest a child will come to seeing the president mm. his entire life. And that's so one it's of the very, very special. Uh, it's one of the significance of decentralizing uh, the national uh, parade, the national celebration of uh, occasions such as uh, these, uh, the Independence Day of Ghana. This is the 63rd Independence uh, Parade. And if you just joined us, uh, this is GTV. I'm in commentary position with my colleague, uh, okay, so we are getting ready for the lighting of the perpetual flame. The symbol of the spirit of independence. It reminds us of our responsibility to keep the spirit of nationalism alive. Senator Gant are commanded by one of Sakura's two at Bashisali Evelyn. The Ghana Army Guard is Sergeant Osayme St. Joseph or Heme. The Ghana Army the Ghana Navy Guard is Petty of Sakura's two at Shia Paul. The Ghana Air Force Guard is Sergeant Abeyen Otniel. The police guard is Sergeant Ibrahim Nazar. So the lighting of the perpetual flame, uh, it's one of the very significant uh, uh, ceremonies here. Exactly. The flame and the lighting of the perpetual flame is a symbol of the spirit of independence. It's also meant to awaken our spirit as individuals and as Ghanaians to uphold patriotism, nationalism. Anything that you do that does not promote the welfare of Ghana would have to desist from it and uphold only things that will move Ghana forward as a country. And there we have it, the perpetual flame. 
and um, there is the playing of uh, a sound I'm very familiar with to have been coming from the military and there we have it uh, the president has lighted the perpetual flame um, and, and, and that's it's meant to rekindle the flame that individuals need as Ghanaians to ensure that they do the right thing so that our nation Ghana can move forward. So we need to be constantly reminded. And the crowd here going ecstatic. Uh, they simply uh, cannot control their excitement to be a part of this. For many of these people, and, this is the first time. And in your shot now, we have the Air Force yeah. towing the Ghana flag as the perpetual flame is lighted. You know, the flag is a spirit of Ghana. When you go anywhere, you are holding the flag. You don't have to introduce yourself. You tell everybody where you are from. So just as the perpetual flame is lighted, the, the, the flag is to remind us of our commitment to Mother Ghana to ensure that we progress as a people. Everybody else is seeing the beauty of what has just happened. I am looking at the hard work behind the scenes that made this happen. It would have taken a lot of practice, a lot of rehearsal, and the timing was so perfect that as soon as the perpetual flame was lighted, the, the, the chopper with the Ghana flag just showed up in the air, waving the Ghana flag around. It's a sight to behold. The hard work, precision. Exactly. And rehearsal, rehearsal, rehearsal is the only way you can get it right. Uh, uh, if you're watching us from wherever you are, uh, you are not at the, uh, at the uh, Baba Yara Sports Stadium right now, uh, just over our heads at the moment, we can feel the vibration of the chopper as it flies over our heads from the position where we are bringing you commentary. You need to be here right now to have a feel of um, the excitement here. Uh, our cameras will try to bring you all the reactions from the stands like we're doing now, but the emotions, you simply have to be here to feel it. Uh, Ashanti region, Mass is blessed to have uh, the ceremony come to them, and you can see it for yourselves. Everyone is excited here. And as we celebrate and are excited, we should not forget that we need to keep our spirits of nationalism alive. Sometimes when you walk into town, you, you wonder whether we really love our nation. Filth has engulfed us. And so we need to remind ourselves, anything that draws us back, we have to desist from it. And now that the perpetual flame has been lighted, um, but there are other activities that um, the president will be engaging in. The ceremony will continue uh, from here. Uh, Selikim, are we able to let our audience know uh, exactly what's coming up from here? And then uh, we'll prepare them for it as we proceed with the coverage. As uh, we're going to see the uh, security services continue. Selected groups, including representatives of all the 16 regions, uh, uh, if, if you are updated, 16 regions now, and of course the Nation Builders Corps, Forestation Groups, and other banners. We are also going to see the march passed by the veterans as the uh, Veterans Administration Ghana. We'll see a cultural display, gymnastics by the Ghana Armed Forces, a uh, physical training school. It is, it is important, Selikem, to talk about the Veterans Administration Ghana and the members. Um, uh, this is a group that was formed following the riots in 1948. The shooting, the crossroads shooting in 1948, that got um, uh, three soldiers who had returned from the Second World War, who had gone there to fight. On they returned and the compensation that was due them was not given to them and when they were going to the castle to demand for these compensations three of them were killed on the spot we are made to understand that a lot more of them died later from wounds they they, they received uh, on on that occasion um, uh, we have uh, teacher Kantanka here he, uh, when the time permits us will allow teacher to uh, give us a bit of uh, that history she just talked about the fact that and we'll be seeing them pretty shortly the veterans who returned from the war 1948 largely it is believed that uh, it was that single incident that sparked off the true attainment of independence and got Osajifo and the JB Dankwa and the, everybody else who had a hand in uh, Ghana's attainment of independence at the time to wake up 
and begin to actually push for the final shot to be given. Yeah, that is very true. Uh, what happened after they had been shot and uh, 23 of them were also severely wounded and this sparked general uh, looting and misunderstanding everywhere. So uh, this actually made the government of that day, that is the British government, understand that there is something heavier coming from the sky so that they have to uh, prepare. And this uh, again made